Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on Danish political parties. So today's episode was requested by Sam Volkers on YouTube. If you want me to do another country's political parties, please either comment it down below, send me an email, or put a request in the feedback and request form. I currently have requests to do Serbian parties, Greek parties, Ukrainian parties, Moldovan parties, South Korean parties, Moroccan parties, Chilean parties, German parties, Swiss parties, Iranian parties, and many more. So Denmark recently, in November of 2022, had an election. The new ruling coalition was unique in the fact that it was a centrist coalition, not based around the two blocks in Danish politics, the red and the blue block. The red block was most of the left-wing parties, A, F, U, B, and O, while the blue block was most of the right-wing parties, V, I, C, and O, A, and D, to a certain extent. I think it'll actually be interesting to see what happens to these blocks in the next couple of years. A new center may dominate Danish politics, or this new centrist government may just be an anomaly. We'll just have to wait and see. Denmark's main legislative body is the Folketing, which is made up of 179 MPs. 135 of these MPs are elected from 10 constituencies found throughout Denmark, via proportional representation. A party that gets more votes in that district will send more MPs to the Folketing. The number of MPs each constituency will send will vary depending on the constituency's population, with Zeeland sending 20 MPs, while Bernholm sends only 2. Another 40 MPs are elected from leveling seats, which ensure proportionality in the Folketing. In order for a party to get at least some seats from the leveling seats, they have to get at least 2% of the vote. I'm not going to go over how the remaining 4 MPs are elected, and save that for later, but just know that they are all from the Faroe Islands and Greenland, which both have their own special administrative status. MPs will vote on rules and regulations, elect the most powerful political figure in the country, the Prime Minister and their cabinet, and will vote on the state's budget. Denmark is also a member of the EU, sending 14 members to EU Parliament, with parties needing to win at least 5% of the vote in order to get a seat. So the largest party in both the new centrist government and within the Red Bloc is the Social Democrat II, or Social Democrats, or as they are sometimes referred to by their election symbol, A. The Social Democrats are center-left Social Democrats, and have their origins in the socialist and trade union movement that emerged towards the end of the 19th century. While initially quite small, as the Danish political system became more liberalized, the party grew, and from 1924 to 2001, the Social Democrats were the most voted for party in Denmark every election. It took a dip at the start of the 21st century, but again since 2015, it has been the most voted for party. Its support base is a combination of trade unionists, those involved in cultural activities, academics, and gets more support in the north, Bornholm, Fun, and the suburbs outside Copenhagen. It currently has 50 MPs, has 32,000 card-carrying members, and sends three members to EU Parliament, who sit in the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats. It is currently led by Meta Frederiksen, the current Prime Minister and MP. The Social Democrats back a lot of the same stuff that Social Democrats throughout Europe back, although recently this has been changing. They support heavy government investment into the economy, support a strong welfare state, wants to invest more in infrastructure, supports cracking down on tax evasion, wants more investment into the healthcare system, and supports a transition to a green economy. In terms of foreign policy, it is pro-EU, supports a more unified European policy on foreign policy, taxes, crime, and migration. It also is pro-NATO, and supports the Swedipa party and multi-party elections in Swaziland. However, the Danish Social Democrats notably differ from other European Social Democrats, by recently, under Frederiksen's leadership, coming to strongly oppose increased immigration into Denmark, wanting a significant reduction of immigrants from non-Western countries, arguing they lower wages. This position as hostile towards non-Western immigration has led to some controversy, as segments of the Danish left have accused the party of pandering to racist and populist. Its traditional Red Bloc allies grew even more upset with them after the recent elections, where it decided to form a government with the traditional center-right party, Venstra, which will likely restrict many of the Social Democrats' economic policies. So those on the left may view the party as more and more abandoning its more left-wing and progressive policies for power and selling out. Right-wingers, however, still likely won't look on the party too favorably, as its economic policies are criticized as wasteful, reckless, and just result in more taxes. 
Despite all this, though, the party did very well in the last election, emerging as the largest party and getting almost 15 percentage points more than the next largest party. Speaking of the next largest party, we have Venstre, Democrats Liberal Party, or Left, Denmark's Liberal Party, or just V. Venstre is the main center-right party in Denmark, embracing right-wing liberal positions. You may be confused why Venstre, a party meaning literally left, is the country's largest right-leaning party. Well, Venstre was originally founded in 1870 as a collection of peasant movements that opposed the traditional aristocracy and fought for liberal reform, which at the time was quite left-wing. As the Social Democrats grew, Venstre began clashing with them, thus ironically making the left party right. It today is supported generally by entrepreneurs, business people, farmers, and got the most votes in western Jutland, Bornholm, and some rich neighborhoods of Copenhagen. It has 23 MPs, almost 31,000 card-carrying members, and sends four members to EU Parliament, who sit in the Renew Europe group. It is currently led by Jakob Elman Jensen, the current Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Defense, and AMP. Venstra's big focus is on freedom, with almost every page on their website referencing the importance of freedom for them. They believe in free market economics, support private property rights, are concerned about the public debt, supports less regulation of corporations and entrepreneurs, and wants a tax freeze preventing any new taxes from being established, especially opposing income taxes, although they are in favor of taxing polluters. In terms of social policy, it does back more conservative positions, supporting tough on crime policies, wants immigrants to assimilate more into Danish society, supports a stricter immigration policy, and supports the Church of Denmark remaining the national church of the country. Finally, in terms of foreign policy, it is pro-NATO, pro-free trade, supports a stronger Danish military, supporting universal conscription, and is pro-EU, wanting a unified foreign policy and supports the euro. One of the biggest complaints people have with Venstra is their economic policy, which people see as serving the interests of the rich and powerful and ignoring those worst off. They see the economic freedom Venstra preaches as just freedom for the rich. Venstra, while it is still the largest party in the blue bloc, more and more it seems to be challenged by other newer parties as the largest right-wing party, with in 2015 Venstra coming behind the Danish People's Party, and opinion polls before the latest election showing for around a year the Conservatives as more popular than them. It's unlikely Venstra working with the Social Democrats will really help, since they are seen as political rivals, and will likely lead many right-wingers to see them as sellouts. Even on Venstra's website, they have a page discussing why they joined the government, with the Social Democrats, and you get a sense reading it that Venstra has already faced severe internal criticism, and asked their supporters to understand. So what forced both Venstra and the Social Democrats into this awkward coalition? Well, it is the last member of the ruling coalition, Moderatinen, or the Moderates, or M. The Moderates were recently founded in the summer of 2022, from ex-Venstra Prime Minister Lars Lukin Rasmussen. Rasmussen argued back in 2019 that Venstra should consider moderating and work with the Social Democrats, something that proved controversial within the party. He left Venstra in 2021, and in the run-up to the 2022 election, proved to be a very important political player, hoping that his new party would hold the balance of power and could play kingmaker. The Modders ultimately ended up in third place, getting the most support broadly in the south, particularly in the area outside Copenhagen, on the island of Zealand. The party currently has 16 MPs. Rasmussen is currently an MP and Minister of Foreign Affairs. The Modders generally support liberal economics, and promotes reform throughout the Danish state. It seemingly wants the welfare system to be reformed to provide better services and promote growth. It wants to lower taxes across the board, but especially on those who make less and entrepreneurs. It wants to cut down on the bureaucracy, I think, and wants to reform the pension system to better prepare Denmark for when more of its population becomes old and can no longer work. It also wants to make it easier for more skilled workers to enter the country, supports a CO2 tax, and argues every young Dane should spend at least some time working for the state as a form of conscription. The Moderates' origins as a party from Venstra, and made up with many ex-Venstra members in its ranks, means that the left in Denmark doesn't really believe them when they claim to be centrist. They see the Moderates as holding very few differences from Venstra, so they are seen as pretty much just another center-right party. I'd imagine many on both the right and left are upset with the government, as both sides are forced to compromise for the middle. The moderate strategy this election was playing kingmaker, but they actually didn't hold the balance of power after the election, 
with the Red Bloc actually having a majority. The only reason they got into government was because Fredrickson wanted to set up a centrist government. If the Social Democrats get annoyed at the moderates for dragging them to the right, the Social Democrats can always abandon the government and set up a coalition with the left. In which case, the moderates are just left out to dry. Hi everyone, editing Ryan from the future. I kind of thought about it a little bit more, and I don't actually 100% agree with the statement that uh, the Social Democrats could just magically form a left-wing government. Um, thinking about some of the other parties that I'm going to talk about later on, there would be some problems, but theoretically the Social Democrats could just set up a whole new government. And that's kind of my point, that the, um, the moderates don't actually hold the balance of power entirely. They didn't emerge from this election as powerful as they thought they might have been. So now on to the opposition. The largest opposition party is the Socialistic Folk Party, or Socialist People's Party, or by its English name, Green Left, or just its election symbol, F. F is a left-wing party, describing itself as Green Left and a popular socialist party. It was founded in the 50s as a socialist party supporting a democratic path towards socialism, and was hostile towards the Soviet Union's heavy-handed approach. It has often served as an ally to the Social Democrats over the years, often acting as confidence and supply with them, and joining in government with them from 2011 to 2014, although it was to its frustration unable to form a government with the Social Democrats this last election. It gets the most support in large cities, particularly in the East, and seems to be a much more grassroots movement when compared to the Social Democrats, with some union support. It currently has 15 MPs, 9,000 card-carrying members, and sends two members to EU Parliament, who sit in the Green slash European Free Alliance group. It is currently led by Pia Olsen Dürer, AMP and former Minister of Transport. F supports broadly left-wing ideals. It calls for the building of more disability-friendly housing, supports the building of more public sports facilities, supports greater LGBTQ rights, supports the creation of more nature reserves in the country, wants to reform and democratize the Danish National Church, and opposes a strict immigration policy. Economically, it wants to increase the pay to sectors that women traditionally work in to reduce the gender wage gap, wants to lower rent prices in large cities, opposes fare increases to public transport, and supports progressive taxes. In terms of foreign policy, it is pro-EU, supporting more cooperation in terms of reaching environmental and social goals, is pro-Palestinian, is sympathetic towards Greenlandic and Faroese independence, and supports more investment in cybersecurity. Since EFT is left of the Social Democrats, Many who feel the Social Democrats are reckless spenders feel even more so about F, since they are seen as the more principled version of the Social Democrats. This more principled stance, but still associated with the Social Democrats, have caused a lot of problems for the party. It is seen as sometimes too inflexible by the Social Democrats to have in government, so it is sidelined and can be left out of influencing the government, like it is right now, but it also is too moderate to be seen as a genuine leftist opposition by those left of them. The one time F joined a government, it resulted in many defections, accusations of incompetence, and the next election saw the party get its worst ever result in almost 40 years. Also, its founder was accused in 2005 of being a CIA agent, so that likely has been used as ammunition against it by more leftist Danes. Going to the opposite side of the political spectrum, we have the Denmark's Demokratinen, or Denmark Democrats, or A. Ah. The Democrats are a recently created party, founded by Inger Stolberg, a former Venstre minister. The party was founded after Stolberg left Venstre, for reasons we will talk about later, and began agitating for a new right-wing party, and was quickly joined by members of Venstre, the Conservatives, and the Danish People's Party. The party is self-described as non-socialist. The name Denmark Democrats is likely a reference to the Swedish Democrats, a right-wing populist party in neighboring Sweden, and it'd probably be pretty fair to say the Denmark Democrats are populist as well. It gets the most support in northern and western Jutland. It currently has 14 MPs. Stober is currently a MP and was formerly the Minister of Immigration and Integration. The Democrats' platform calls for a return of power and cohesion to Danes throughout Denmark, not just among the elites of Copenhagen and the Folketing, as they describe it. It wants to reduce regulation of businesses, especially small businesses and farmers, wants to improve the quality of nursing homes, and wants immigrants to assimilate into Danish society. It also supports an extra nine weeks of maternity leave, wants to reduce taxes on those living in rural areas, and wants to remove VAT taxes on electricity bills. It is hostile towards the EU, opposing further EU regulations in Denmark. So as alluded to earlier, Stolberg left Venstra in tense circumstances. 
she, while Minister of Immigration, was found to have separated couples where at least one of the individuals in the couple was a minor, without their case being individually assessed, and then later on, once the Folketing began looking into it, she was accused of lying in the Folketing. This and the fact that the order was deemed illegal led to her being arrested and tension with Venstra, so her record has been muddied by this case. She also, while minister, generally tried to discourage Muslim immigration into the country, so many of her opponents have labeled her as Islamophobic. I'm talking a lot about Stolberg, because it seems she really is the face of the party. While it seems a little early to really say, I suspect the party's fortunes really rely on Stolberg being popular, and may suffer if her popularity falters. Another right-leaning party is the Liberal Alliance, or I. The Liberal Alliance is a classically liberal and libertarian party, just generally opposing increased government in Denmark. It since its founding has been close with the Blue Bloc, serving in the government with Venstra and the Conservatives from 2016 to 2019. It got the most support last election from Western Jutland and northern suburbs of Copenhagen, and gets more support from both young voters and businessmen. It currently has 14 MPs and 4,000 card-carrying members. It is led by Alex Vanosplag, an MP. The Liberal Alliance supports less bureaucracy, more transparency in government, wants to lower taxes, wanting to actually get rid of the registration tax, inheritance tax, and top tax, actually explaining on their website how to avoid paying the top tax, supports limited privatization in the welfare sector, wants to reduce unemployment benefits, and less regulation in the housing market. It wants less EU regulations, supports more free trade, is pro-NATO, and opposes conscription. It also opposes gender quotas, wants less government regulations in the Church of Denmark, wants less taxes on cultural institutions, and supports more skilled immigrants but less refugees entering the country. The Liberal Alliance is in some ways a younger Venstra. It is very focused on reducing taxes and government regulation, so it is disliked by those on the left, seeing them as just for the rich and ignoring those worse off. Because it was only founded in 2007, it lacks the longevity other parties have, which can lead some to call them inexperienced, and they have only served in government once. After it came to power, it started losing support until eventually getting only 2.33% of the vote in the 2019 election, down more than 5 percentage points. The reasons seem largely because the Liberal Alliance was betrayed as being power-hungry in joining with Venstra, and abandoning its principles since Venstra is more moderate than them. However, they last election recovered, getting almost 8% of the vote, its best result ever. Next we have De Conservative Volk Party, or the Conservative People's Party, or C. The Conservatives are, shock of all shocks, conservative, and originate from the Hore Party, or literally Bright Party, that served as conservative opposition to Venstra, representing the traditional aristocracy and social elites. The party as we know it today was founded in 1916, as a merger of Hore, a breakoff of Hore, and a moderate breakoff of Venstra. While they were historically rivals, the Conservatives and Venstra are seen as very close today, often working together, and serving together in government. Today, it received the backing of the country's business class and those in either Western Jutland or Northern Zealand. It currently has 10 MPs, almost 12,000 members, and sends one member to EU Parliament, who sits in the European People's Party group. It is currently led by Søren Pape Poulsen, a MP and former Minister of Justice. The Conservatives back socially conservative policy, like wanting more tough on crime laws, wants to ensure immigrants integrate into wider Danish society, wants less refugees to come to Denmark, opposes the legalization of marijuana, wants to ban the burqa, supports the Church of Denmark remaining the national church, and wants the royal family to continue leading the country. On economics, it is generally liberal, supporting lower taxes, wants less government spending, although it does support more funds going to transition Denmark into having a more environmentally friendly agriculture. It also is pro-EU, supporting more European cooperation and favors more environmental regulations. The Conservatives, while they were the largest party of the right in the early days, have largely taken a backseat to Venstra. While there was a period in the 80s to early 90s where the Conservatives were more popular than Venstra, and briefly before the election, opinion polls suggested they would dominate, they have come to be seen more as a minor ally to Venstra. Partially, this can be blamed on the Conservatives just maintaining an image that they are more stuck in the past. But also, a big problem the Conservatives have faced is in recent years they have had a relatively poor quality in leadership. 
In the 90s to 2000s, frequent infighting and several scandals took place, making the Conservatives appear incompetent. In the lead-up to the 2022 election, it looked like they might become the largest party in the Blue Bloc, but Polson's husband was found to have lied to the media about several facts about his life, which made Polson appear as if he was duped and dumb. The Conservatives certainly aren't going away anytime soon, but so long as scandal continues to occur in the party, the party will remain as a minor player. From the traditional right, we go to the radical left, with Indilhistin de Rune Gorn, or the Unity List, Red Green Alliance, or U. The Red Green Alliance was formed in the late 80s as a merger of several different Marxist parties in Denmark, hoping to unify and strengthen their position in the Danish politics. It has emerged as the most left wing party in the Folketing, and is definitively socialist. It gets the most support in the East particularly in Copenhagen and other large cities, and has a decent amount of union support. It currently has 9 MPs, 9,000 members, and sends one member to EU Parliament, who sits in the left of EU Parliament group. It has no leader, but their spokesperson is Mai Vilesen, AMP. The Red-Green Alliance, being a party founded from several different Marxist groups, is very anti-capitalist. It critiques capitalism for being undemocratic, harming the environment, exploiting the global south, and creating inequality. It favors a stronger welfare state, opposes welfare cuts, advocates expanding, quote, collective form of property, wanting to nationalize banks in the country, wants to crack down on tax evasion, and wants to ban tuition fees. In terms of foreign policy, it is hostile towards the EU, opposing free trade, wants Denmark to leave NATO, and argues the Danish military should be abolished. It also favors greater LGBTQ rights, supports renewable energy, and opposes the Church of Denmark being the national church of the country. The Red-Green Alliance is the furthest left group in the Folketing, and so therefore it can be hard for them to get their bills passed. Even parties in the Red Bloc can be skeptical of them and see them as unrealistic. A good example of this is the fact that the Alliance has never been a part of a government, only serving as confidence and supply. This has severely reduced their power and led them to act more as a protest vote than an actual party capable of governing the country at the national level. Also not sure if this is still an ongoing issue within the party, but in the 2000s there was apparently a decent amount of infighting in the party whether the party should be a strictly atheist and anti-religious party, or if they should just be in favor of freedom of religion and oppose a national church. This debate largely came from the party having a Muslim woman as a candidate, who was apparently very religious and refused to shake men's hands due to her religious beliefs. Another radical party, a part of the Red Bloc, is Radikale Vinstra, or Radical Left, or their English name, the Danish Social Liberal Party, or B. The party was founded in 1905 as a breakoff of Vinstra, from those that wanted a more anti-war approach and favored more democratization. So the party isn't really radical, it is a social liberal party in the center of the political spectrum, but the name traces itself back to the early 20th century, where the political spectrum was skewed differently. It historically was seen serving as a kingmaker in Danish politics, often deciding if Vinstra, the Conservatives, or the Social Democrats would govern. However, in the 21st century it has lost this position, and now serves mostly as an ally to the Social Democrats within the Red Bloc. It gets the most support among the urban middle class, particularly those in Copenhagen and Eastern Jutland. The party currently has 7 MPs, 7,000 members, and sends one member to EU Parliament, who sits in the Renew Europe group. It is currently led by Martin Lugord, AMP and former Minister of Foreign Affairs. The Social Liberals on their election program page talk a lot about taking care of the environment and working to unify Denmark. It wants to make Denmark carbon negative, wants to promote clean drinking water, wants to promote more force in Denmark, and wants Denmark to lead international commitments in fighting climate change. It also argues for more investment into schools, opposes discrimination, wants to make it easier for young people to enter the workforce, wants Denmark to adhere to refugee quotas, and is pro-EU. The social liberals' position in the middle, similar to the moderates, have earned it the dislike of those that want a more principled government, and their historic role as kingmakers likely saw many view them as opportunistic and power-hungry. Members of the Red Bloc are likely annoyed that not only do the social liberals force them to moderate to the middle, but also the fact that the social liberals were the ones that demanded an early election to be held in 2022, which ended up giving power to Venstra. Even more annoyingly for the left, the Social Liberals actually called for a centrist government in their electoral manifesto, something that may have showed to many left-leaning people the party wasn't for a left-leaning government and therefore not for their interest. The Social Liberals potentially could have won a centrist and moderate support base like it historically had, 
But most centrists ended up voting for the moderate party. While admittedly the moderate party, also as stated previously, does have its own political tilt, the moderates do not have the baggage the social liberals have and were a new party. The social liberals also ended up in a very awkward position of not actually being a part of the opposition, but not being a part of the government, and not even supporting the government. So they are just indifferent to the government, which is a very bizarre political position to be in. The social liberals, while not completely dead, are very weak after this last election. The last left-leaning party is Alternative, or the Alternative, or U. The Alternative is a broadly left-wing party, although they claim they don't fit in the left-right paradigm. It emerged as a breakoff from the Danish Social Liberal Party in 2015, and initially opposed a Venstre government with the Red Bloc, but after 2019 it tried to form a third Green Bloc. Most people would probably just label it as vaguely environmentalist and progressive. It got the most support last election broadly in large cities in the East. It currently has 6 MPs and 3,000 members. It is currently led by Francisco Rosenkling, AMP, and former Copenhagen City Council member. The alternative supports more environmental regulations, calling for Denmark to start to transition to 100% renewable energy by 2040, wants to reduce the use of harmful chemicals, wants to revamp ways of tracking biodiversity in Denmark, wants to reduce Denmark's ecological footprint, wants more cooperation with the EU on fighting climate change and supports carbon taxes. It also favors a shorter work week, wants to increase taxes on soda, alcohol, and tobacco, opposes discrimination, wants to end the property tax freeze, wants more public investment in the economy, and opposes a military interventionist foreign policy in the Middle East. The alternative's position as a left-wing party that cares deeply about the environment is, unfortunately for them, a position that is already somewhat filled by the green left, the Red-Green Alliance, and even debatably the Social Liberal Party, along with several other small left-wing parties. The Alternative competes with these well-established parties for votes, and since the Alternative attempted to form its own bloc in 2019, I wouldn't be surprised if many left-leaning Danes just don't feel the party is worth voting for. However, the big controversy around Alternative is the infighting. After the founders of the party stepped down in 2019, infighting quickly gripped the party, the new leader was accused of bullying staff members, and half the party's MPs left, forming a rival group known as the Independent Greens. For a while, it actually looked like the alternative wouldn't make it past the electoral threshold, since they were seen as weak and competing with other parties for votes. The only thing that actually brought them over the threshold was a small vegan party merging with it, the founder returning to the party, and potentially the minx coal highlighting animal rights problems in Denmark. But the alternative is still quite small, and it wouldn't be shocking if the party eventually disappears from Danish politics. The next party goes to the other side of the political spectrum. New Borling, or roughly the New Right, or D, is a right-wing nationalist and conservative party. It was founded in 2015 as a breakoff from the Conservative People's Party, wanting a more principled right-wing party that embraced a strict immigration policy and an economically libertarian platform. With it often being described as the economic policies of the Liberal Alliance and the immigration policy of the Danish People's Party, it has been noted for having a very strong online presence, being especially popular online in 2021. It got the most support in the South in southern Jutland and southern Zealand. It currently has 5 MPs and 15,000 members. It is currently led by Pernilla Vermund, AMP and former municipal councillor, although she is apparently stepping down as leader later this year. The New Right's goal is to create a strong cultural community that is based on respecting Denmark. It wants to build this community by reducing the number of immigrants entering the country, removing citizenship from those convicted of treason, deporting criminal immigrants, and leaving the EU, believing it infringes on Danish sovereignty. Economically, it supports a reduced bureaucracy, wants less taxes, wants more autonomy at the local level to reduce costs and keep the public sector closer to the people, and opposes agricultural subsidies. It also wants to ensure all Danish citizens have a home, supports tough on crime laws, and wants to prevent children from being separated from their parents in the case of a divorce. New Right's hard stance towards immigrants, especially Muslim immigrants, along with Vermoon saying a racial slur in a documentary in 2019, have led many to accuse the party of racism and Islamophobia. This xenophobic association has made it so some in the blue bloc don't even want them to be counted in the bloc, seeing them as too right-wing. Apparently media commentators have speculated that the party is suffering from infighting, between those that want to moderate and join the blue bloc, and those who want the party to remain principled and more as a protest party. This infighting will likely increase as Vermoon leads the party, opening up the possibility for a messy leadership election. The party also suffered early after the election, a MP leaving the party due to her boyfriend fighting party members, and having a problem with a lot of vocal online support, but not as many die-hard voters.
The last party is a party I've mentioned at several points. Danske Folkparti, or Danish People's Party, or O. O is a Danish nationalist and right-wing populist party, and was historically the leading anti-immigrant party in Danish politics. It famously was at first written off by the Danish political elite in the late 90s, but it saw growth over the years, reaching its height in 2015, when it became the second most voted for party, beating out the traditional head of the Blue Bloc, Venstre. It never was officially a part of the government, but de facto held many important roles in upholding many Blue Bloc governments. It, for reasons I'll talk about later, and you may be able to guess some of it if you paid attention to the last party, shrunk to where it is today, still in the Folketing, but getting less than 2.6% of the vote. It historically got the most support among those in unions, and among older voters. It got the most support last election in the South. It currently has 5 MPs, 10,000 members, and sends one member to EU Parliament, who sits in the Identity and Democracy Group. It is currently led by Morten Messerschmidt, AMP, and former member of EU Parliament. O supports immigration policies similar to the New Right and the Denmark Democrats. They want to reduce the number of immigrants entering the country, specifically signaling out Muslim immigrants, and wants to reduce the amount of assistance refugees get. They economically are more left-wing than other parties in the Blue Bloc, wanting more investment into healthcare and education, and wants more assistance to the elderly, and is hostile towards excessive cuts to welfare. It also supports tough-on-crime laws, is hostile towards the EU, opposing the Euro, is pro-Israeli, is pro-Taiwanese, and opposes Kosovo's independence. So why did the Danish People's Party go from the second most voted for party in 2015 to getting less than 3% of the vote seven years later? Anti-immigration sentiment has since 2015 been spread out over many parties in Denmark. More traditional Blue Bloc members and even the Social Democrats have moved to a tougher stance on immigration. And new populist parties like the New Right and Denmark Democrats have emerged, all of which have taken voters from the Danish People's Party. Part of the reason the New Right was formed was to criticize the Danish People's Party from the right, claiming they were socialists since their economic policy was more centrist compared to other parties than the Blue Bloc. The Blue Bloc doesn't even necessarily trust them, since they have never actually been allowed in a Blue Bloc government, even when they got the most votes for the Bloc, since they were treated as too controversial. The party also has been criticized for kicking out members who criticize the party, and some members being accused of corruption. All of this has led the party to decline where it is today, while commentators are suggesting the potential infighting in the new right might benefit the party, ultimately the party will struggle so long as there are other alternatives to it. So remember when I said I talk about those last four Folketing MPs from the Faroe Islands in Greenland? Well, here we are. The Faroe Islands in Greenland have a large degree of autonomy and actually have their own unique party system. These parties are sometimes connected to a larger party in Denmark proper, but it sort of depends. These parties often are focused on if these communities should get independence or not, with both having a sizable population, if not a majority that supports independence. I know I was requested to do Greenlandic parties, so at some point I will talk about the parties in Greenland, and I definitely do Faroese parties if people wanted me to do an episode on that. But for this episode, I will just briefly go over the parties present in the Folketing. So from the Faroe Islands, there is the Unionist Party, which is a right-wing liberal party, associated with Venstra, opposes Faroese independence, and supports the government. Then there is the Equality Party, which is social democratic, associated with the social democrats, opposes Faroese independence, and supports the government. From Greenland, there is Samut, which is social democratic, is associated with the social democrats, supports a gradual approach to Greenlandic independence, and supports the government. Finally, there is Inuit... Uh, I'm going to be real, I have no idea how to pronounce this, so I'm just going to spell it out. A-T-A-Q-A-T-I-G-I-I-T. A left-wing nationalist party isn't directly associated with any party, but is a part of the Nordic Green Left Alliance, which also includes Green Left, the Red Green Alliance, and the Alternative, is supportive of Greenlandic independence, and is neutral towards the government, I think. So those are the parties of Denmark. In conclusion, there's a coalition of the middle right now, and then the opposition is everyone else. The traditional blocs are the Red Bloc, which consists of the Social Democrats, the Green Left, the Marxist-inspired Red-Green Alliance, the Social Liberals, and sort of the Progressive Alternative Party. The Blue Bloc consists of the Right Liberal Venstre, the Conservatives, the Libertarian Liberal Alliance, and sort of the Denmark Democrats, the New Right, and the Danish People's Party, which are all different shades of right-wing populist and nationalist. And finally, there is the moderates, which are sort of in the middle. Danish politics are in a weird point where parties are trying to reorient themselves after an election, so you can expect a decent amount of change in the coming years as parties respond to this new centrist government. And so yeah, that's Danish political parties.
Um, it's been a while. I think this has been in the back catalog for almost a year now. It's been a lot of other requests. Uh, so yeah, I realize it takes a very long time for me to get to all the requests for political parties. So I appreciate people's patience. Um, I apologize that it takes so long. But yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Um, up next, I will talk about the history of the Central African Republic. Um, and then I will look at Serbian political parties and then Greek political parties. So yeah, take care. Uh, if you want, you can email me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.